In this video, we're going to talk about the equation for torque. So torque equals uh, radius times a force. <clears throat> and this is very similar to uh, the equation for a moment, right? Moment equals distance times a force. And some of you might recognize that a distance could be a uh, 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 defined as, as a radius, or a radius could be defined as a distance, so you know, technically it, it's, it's kind of the same equation. <clears throat> and really, the difference between torque and, and a moment is, is just context. Moments typically refer to systems in which there, there isn't any motion. So, you know, if you're, <clears throat> if you're doing a, a free body diagram, right, you've got, um, you know, a plank and uh, a force here, and maybe a force here or something, and you're, you're doing some of the moments equals zero to figure out uh, what, uh, what the forces are on both ends. You're assuming some of the moments equals zero. In, in other words, you're assuming equili equilibrium, which means there's no movement, no motion. Whereas torque uh, is, is used within the context of motion. For example, <clears throat> you might uh, specify the torque to be used to install a screw, which obviously requires motion, rotational motion to uh, in install a screw. Or uh, you, might, you might be interested in the torque that is produced by a drill or, or some kind of rotary, um, <clears throat> rotary driver or tool. So that's kind of the, the contextual difference between torque and a moment, even though they, they really have kind of the same equation, um, they're just used uh, to describe different uh, kinds of events or, or different contexts. All right, so having said that, <clears throat> let's talk about torque. All right, so torque equals uh, radius times force. So let's say that we've got, um, we've got, oh, what do we want to say here? Maybe uh, we're trying to install a screw into a threaded hole. So we've got a little block here, and then we've got <coughs> you know, like a threaded hole in there. Those are threads. And we've got a screw that we want to install. And uh, we've got, we've got uh, uh, a torque, torque wrench or a, a, a torque driver. Um, <clears throat> these are tools that you can buy that have a, a, a torque reading somewhere. And some of these are digital, some of them are uh, just analog, um, but you can measure the torque required to <clears throat> screw something in. Um, so that, that torque is going to be defined by uh, radius times force. So l let's say that, <clears throat> maybe let's talk about a, a spanner wrench. Let's say that this screw here is some specialty screw and requires a, a spanner wrench or spanner type driver to install. A spanner um, wrench is, is just a, a wrench that, let's see if I can draw this in a way that, that makes sense. It's got like two little teeth, kind of like this. <clears throat> and then uh, you know, there's like some handle out over here. And these two teeth, right, right there and right there, they fit into uh, corresponding grooves uh, or, or like holes in your part. So, you know, let's say that we are at the top of our screw head. I'm just going to draw this kind of large here. <clears throat> Some kind of custom screw that, that looked like this. So you take your spanner wrench and you lower it down this, you know, this tooth into this hole and, and this, this tooth into this hole. And, and now if we draw this kind of like <clears throat> from a, a top view, we've got the top of our, our screw head with one of the holes here and one of the holes here and then I'll just <clears throat> I'll, I'll draw in yellow our, our spanner wrench we've got I don't know kind of coming off like this where here you know the handles down over here and then we've got uh, um, a tooth in each of those holes <clears throat> and now we're we're rotating um, we're rotating this handle um, uh, 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 as it's engaged to the top of this, this specialty screw here. So we, we want to uh, calculate the torque that's being applied here. 
Now, torque is radius times force, and the, the radius always applies to uh, the distance between <clears throat> the, the pivot or the center. So in this case, our center is, is right there. And let's say that we're applying our, our force right here. So the, the radius we're talking about would be this distance right there. And then our, our force is being applied. Let's see, our force is being applied right there, force. <clears throat> so the torque would, would simply be radius times the force. And maybe our radius is, I don't know, five inches. And maybe our force is uh, <clears throat> three pounds of force. And so our, our torque here to install this screw would be torque equals radius times force equals five inches times three pounds force equals 15 pounds force. Uh, I'm sorry, 15 inch pounds of force. <clears throat> um, torque is always given in units of um, uh, distance times force or force times distance. Um, people sometimes say uh, pound inches or inch pounds. It's really the same thing. Honestly, I'm not sure <clears throat> if there's a, a technically correct way, whether the distance comes before the force or the force before the inches, but I usually just say inch pounds. Um, or if it's in metric, you could say, um, uh, you know, I, I come to think of it in, in metric, I would probably say Newton meters. And so my force would be first and the distance would be last. But when I'm in inches, I don't know. I always say inch pounds, pound inches. Uh, either way, <clears throat> um, so that that would be your torque. Uh, let's see, let's th see if we can think of um, one uh, one other example here. Let's uh, maybe erase some of this. Let's say that we've got a <clears throat> a motor, and um, typically when you're working with a motor, you'll you'll know what the torque is. That's uh, a value that the supplier can can provide to you. So let's say we've got this motor here and we've got this motor shaft right here and we've got uh, some kind of coupler uh, at the end of our, our motor shaft and that coupler um, uh, uh, connects, I don't know, something else that, that looks like this, let's say. So let's say that we, we know that our, our torque from the motor equals, I don't know, a um, uh, hundred inch pounds <coughs> force. And we want to, we want to understand if, um, if we were to, <coughs> let's say that uh, there's a little, I don't know, a little prong coming off the end of whatever this green block is. And we wanted to uh, uh, grab onto this, this little green prong here and hold it. And, and uh, or maybe <clears throat> we wanted to understand how much force would be required to stop this green block from rotating if we were to grab it at that, that green prong there. Um, so the way we would solve that is uh, we'd solve for force. So we reconfigure our, our torque equation. Instead of torque equals radius times force, we would say force equals torque divided by radius. <clears throat> and this is something that you would commonly do. Um, I mean, if, if you were working a problem like this and you needed to solve for force and you had torque, this is how you would go about doing it. So <clears throat> next thing we need to know is our radius. So this would be our axis right here, going through the center of everything. And so our radius would be the distance from the rotational axis out to uh, where our force is applied. So it would be this distance <clears throat> right here. Let's say that's, I don't know, five inches. <clears throat> so uh, going back to our equation, torque equals, or force equals torque over radius. So that equals 100 inch pounds of force over uh, five inches equals uh, 20 pounds of force. <clears throat> so we know that if we applied 20, 20 pounds of force right here, right at that, that little tab that's sticking out, that prong there, 
um, we'd be able to stop the motor because the motor has only a hundred pounds of force. Now, <clears throat> what if um, what if we were to apply that same force, twenty pounds of force, um, maybe only two and a half inches? So maybe we apply it like right here instead, and this this distance right here is only two and a half inches. So let's see um, <clears throat> what. Uh, what what uh, uh, resistance would would that produce? Well, <clears throat> um, we know that uh, we have our, our our force now, right? So we have twenty pounds of force. We're we're just saying that we're going to apply twenty pounds of force at two and a half inches, and, and compare that against our our uh, input torque from the motor shaft. So uh, let's see, force of twenty pounds multiplied by the radius of 2.5 is going to equal 50 <clears throat> inch-pounds force. And we know that our motor is producing 100 inch-pounds of force, so uh, 100 is greater than 50, so we know, okay, this, this green block is, is still going to rotate, even with uh, 50 inch-pounds of, of, of torque um, uh, <clears throat> resistance on that, that green block. And uh, that's how you use the torque equation. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.